We love featuring artists you should know about. And today, we're heading to Florida to chat with singer, songwriter, entrepreneur, Brandon Bing. Brandon hails from Sam Sula. He brings a gritty, unique voice to traditional country music. He writes true, inspiring stories. His debut EP came out in 2020, and he hasn't stopped. His brand new single, To the Bone, comes out tomorrow. We're stoked to have Brandon Bing back on the show. First, Brandon, thanks so much for getting up early with us. Hey, absolutely, man. Appreciate y'all having me, Jeff, as always. Wow. Researching you, Brandon, uh, I I'm exhausted from it. You're a very busy dude. Music, whiskey, Haas Nation, work. How do you juggle it all? Hey, just uh, I'm a maniac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, you are. You, I, I, you might be burnt out at both ends. Uh, your your last <laughs> single. <laughs> Hey, uh, that was actually a good segue to the chapter two, you know, going through the process of just putting and in, in working as a creative, as a writer and as an artist from 2020 till, well, 2019 till now, but from that original debut and like really defining, you know, my sound and really defining, you know, my audience and um, what I'm trying to, you know, convey through my music as a storyteller. Um, and that's what, you know, burnout of both was really that that line in the sand of like hey chapter one over the last four years is uh is complete and so now we're on to chapter two and i'm really excited about all the stuff that i'm i got in the works for everyone yeah because your sound has kind of moved around a little bit have we found it yeah i think so uh about as far as like as far as uh scale one to ten i'm at a, i'm at a ten at this point i mean i don't i've i've done a lot of you know, self-reflection. I've had an opportunity to kind of just redig through the old catalog um, that's out there. And I feel like, you know, I had a little bit of a different position compared to other artists that had, you know, a certain team around them because I had to bootstrap everything from the ground up. And so I had to, you know, in the amidst everything that we went through um, from COVID and everything with all the, the limitations of performances and the ability to be around people for the, for that duration over that couple year, uh, stint, I had to be more creative behind the scenes. You know, uh, I had to dig deeper as a writer. I had to figure out what was a strategic way I wanted to position myself. And ultimately it made me find the sound, um, uh, you know, the true sound of like who I am, you know, in confidence. So, you know, I've developed, I've, I've gotten stronger in every aspect and I'm always trying to get grow every day to be a better version of myself in each, you know, facet of the music, right? Between production, between song choices, between writing style, between live performance. And of course, uh, the business side with like merch and just, uh, you know, crowd engagement. So, yeah, well, you're doing it. Well, you kind of mentioned it right there. You are a storyteller. I think your songs have gotten a lot more personal. There, there's a funny thing on one of your social medias. You said, when your ex is crazy, write music. And, and, I, and, you, and, and I mean, to the bone is right there. But your stuff has gotten a lot more personal. Yeah. And I feel like that was really, uh, to, to your point, Jeff, with that was when I came, when I came out with my first uh, EP back in 2020, The Florida Man, you know, it was, uh, it was get your feet wet. It was dipping the toes into letting people dip their toes into who Brandon Bing was because they didn't know who Brandon Bing was at all. Right. It was, yeah. here's a new person on the radar. And is he on the radar yet? Is he going to stay on this radar? Like, where's, where's he going to go? Cause I think in music city, like just being in Nashville and also in my space, you know, being around the Texas music scene as well, because I have a lot of influences in that space. Um, I think as a collective, it's, you know, there's so many people, male and female alike, that want to pursue music or be an artist or be a writer. And there's a very small percentage that can write and be an artist, you know, doing both sides. So it's like, okay, if you're going to pursue that path, uh, you know, what do you have to bring to the table and add value to, you know, all the greats that are doing this? Um, but at the same time, how do you earn that level of respect? And I felt that the best way I could do that was show my um, versatility. And ultimately being able to just consistently find, you know, deeper cuts. And I didn't want to just verbal vomit all this stuff up front because I didn't have the audience to consume it. So I had to build the audience and then stair step it. And that's what I did from Florida Man to Dying Breed to the Huckleberry album till, you know, these last handful of releases that were singles that I put out. And now I've, I've made that natural progression. So people that know me uh, from there were the day oneers or the people that are finding me now 
if they deep dive back into the back of the catalog, they can see the connection points and see that growth and see the consistency that, okay, he found his sound, he found like where he's going, but he didn't change the style, the, the, the arrangements with the, the instrumentation and the production. Like he just made it stronger, um, for the years to, to, you know, ingest. Yeah. We're chatting with, Brent, with Brandon Bing. Go check him out. BrandonBingMusic.com. He's on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify. His brand new single, To the Bone, comes out tomorrow. Well, you grew up in Florida. Lots yes, of sir. rock music. What What were you listening oh, yeah. to growing up? Hey, man, that, <laughs> uh, man, so, uh, you know, um, you know, Rob Thomas went to my high school at Lake Brantley High School. Oh, wow. Um, so, old Matchbox 20, you know, and. And, uh, you know, Limp Bizkit, uh, Trivium was down here. Uh, um, obviously, you know, you got Tom Petty, Skinner, um, you know, 38 Special, all those guys, they came through Florida. Uh, um, and so, like, that Southern Rock, Hard Rock scene was very big. And then when I was a kid, you know, I would say middle school through high school, man, I listened to a lot of, like, you know, uh, uh, Weezer. I was listening to, like, you know, Puddle of Mud. I was listening to, um, you know, Incubus and... Uh, uh, you know, drowning pool, like just all over the place in that, in that realm, you know, um, offspring. So we had a lot of that, like alternative punk grunge, uh, kind of style in the, in the early 2000s. And so those were a lot of the, uh, you know, different bands and things like that, um, that I, I listened to. And it was just crazy seeing the complexity of their musicality. You know, when you listen to people like, uh, you know, system of a down or corn or, um, you know, uh, you listen to Slipknot and stuff like that. I just love the infusion and just like the energy that was behind their songs. And I was like, well, you know, growing up also around a lot of just a, a mixed platform of, of traditional country and, uh, neo, like, I guess like nineties country. Then I was like, I felt that there's this, this unique niche that I could create that would stay authentic to, what I was surrounded by, by kind of finding a way to like kind of fuse the two. So yeah. it's kind of, it's, it's kind of a cool thing because, you know, I didn't go the route, like you got someone like Hardy who's going just, you know, he splits his prod, his project, right. He'll, he'll take like, uh, you know, the heavy metal and the, and the grunge rock side. And then he separates that from a traditional side or on the, the, the most recent quit album that he put out a couple of weeks ago. You definitely can see that just, purely like a rock album, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he's made that, that, uh, that separation there. Me, I made the, I made the, the, the focal point of kind of living in the crack. You know, you got someone like Co Wetzel who came out with nine lives last week, who's doing, um, a Texas country with a rocker edge. And I found a way to kind of take the crack that, that they're not really defining. And so I just want to kind of hug that space in between and kind of bring that Florida dynamic into it. Um, because, you know, as much as I have all these influences, at the end of the day, I want to be able to, to represent where I'm from, which is the good old, you know, gunshine state of Florida. So, yeah. My dad lived in New Smyrna Beach for 10, 15 years because you're like Sam that's, Sula. You're like between Port right Orange. Yeah. Where are yeah. you at? That's literally right there. Yeah. It's New Smyrna, Port Orange. Uh, Sam Sula, Port Orange, and New Smyrna. It's basically, Sam Sula is like basically New Smyrna and Port Orange. It's like the cut. It's so small, but it's literally attached to both. Okay. Yeah. And, and you're, you're more inland. Uh, yeah. I'm right in the forest edge cut. That's where I'm, you know, where I resided down there. And then obviously now I live up in Nashville, but, you know, I'm, that's where I'm from. Yeah. And another thing, I mean, Brandon's got so much going on. It's, it's insane. Bangtail whiskey, boy, this thing is starting to heat up. You're starting to get this yeah. all over Florida. You just had a bottle signing event. You sold out. Yeah, yeah, we sold out. Um, it was a great event. Uh, did it at Ormond Liquor. It's a new liquor store in Ormond Beach, Florida. I did a pop up there, and uh, that was a great event. We also did an event at the Port Orange ABC uh, Fine Wines and Spirits, and uh, I, I did the spring event and uh, sold out. I was the only brand out of all the brands that were there that sold out that day. It was. It's been cool, man, just to kind of have a product that's like a true Florida whiskey, you know, whiskey bourbon and building a brand that, you know, not only can the people from my home state support, but also, you know, all the, uh, you know, the people that enjoy live music because, you know, I built Bangtail for two reasons. You know, my mom's from Kentucky. And so I was always a big proponent of uh, just being a connoisseur of whiskeys and bourbons. 
and um you know the big eddie and jimmy ruckle fan from a wild turkey and i loved you know eagle rare and um you know uh, different brands like that and i just took different notes and wanted to make my own uh whiskey bourbon using florida uh locally sourced florida sweet corn instead of regular corn and uh just kind of building that from the ground up and more importantly i wanted to have something that was going to connect with all the patrons consuming live music so i really built the whiskey not only for the local support from where i'm from in florida but also on the musical space all my other artists and industry friends you know i want to have a product that was going to give their fans the inside lens on the behind the scenes of what we do on the road you know trying to put these shows and festivals together by having a product that was going to support original live music and the story to, uh behind the song which goes back to me being a storyteller yeah well it must be good because you're always smiling brandon and then uh yeah I, there, there's a, an awesome clip if you go check out his social media you and chase matthew you go on stage with chase and you pound like half a bottle or something brandon <laughs> it's, it's insane yeah yeah me and chase are uh man chase is just like he's like a brother to me man i've, I've known chase the last you know, five going on six years. And, uh, you know, it was cool, you know, watching him from when he was like 19, 20 years old till now. And, uh, we played little, uh, dive bars, everything from Silverado's to Cahoots to being at the Lebanon, like the festivals and stuff out there. And I just, uh, you know, it was just kind of a full circle moment. You know, uh, we were at the Cajun Country Jam and, uh, what was it? It was North Park in Denham Springs, Louisiana. And that was the first time I've been there. And coincidentally, it was the first time I, if I recall, I think that was the first time he's ever been or played there as well. And, uh, you know, my whiskey was also the official whiskey of the You, Me and Whiskey video for uh, Justin Moore, which was another artist that I've always really, you know, uh, appreciated growing up and to have the opportunity to work with him and uh, my friend Priscilla Block, you know, and them doing that duet. That was his 12th number one. So, you know, I got to do that show, open for that that festival, share the stage with my buddy Chase, um, have some cool memories to, to look back on, and uh, just shows that there's just so much ahead. So, And now he's out on, on tour now uh, with Jason Aldean, so I couldn't be happier. Yeah, he's tearing it up. He's got a cool story, too. He said he's a high school dropout and, you know, yep. believe in yourself, believe in God, and, and keep at it. So that's pretty sweet. Pretty much. Holler boys, you know what I mean? He's, he's from the holler, so. He, uh, his parents are great. And, uh, you know, like I said, he's just always been, he's got a great work ethic and I've always appreciated just, uh, not just his friendship, but just seeing him do his thing and, and build his space, you know, uh, as a newer artist and, uh, to be able to support your friends while you're chasing your, you know, your goals is, is a cool thing to be a part of. Yeah. Go check Brandon out. He's at brandonbingmusic.com. He's on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify. His brand new single to the bone comes out tomorrow. Well, you're taking over Florida, Brandon. AllAmericanSolar.com. Go check him out. Give yourself a plug here. You do what? Solar panels, battery backup. Tell us. Yep. Yeah, so I uh, got a solar company, man. I started it back in 2015, and I uh, really try to focus and dominate the space, providing I uh, do a lot of agricultural and residential projects. I'm starting to really expand into the commercial space. You know, my whole thing uh, on this whole thing with Hawk Nation is, you know, being a basically being a blue collar boy, you know, building a, you know, just again, bootstrapping a business from the ground up. Everything I've done, I've done, you know, out of my own pocket. I've done, I, you know, I didn't come from the Silver Spoon uh, Trust Fund, you know, family. So, you know, it, it came out with just hard work and um, commitment and consistency. So, you know, it's really just being able to uh, educate people about the solutions, uh, working with you know, farmers and ranchers and, and uh, residential consumers and showing them solutions they could take advantage of. And then, of course, with the battery backup, that's an expertise working with um, battery backup, storage, um, and also smart home automation and electric car charging. So it's a cool thing, man, to help, you know, some of these retirees and veterans that have medical issues uh, and helping families be secure uh, when we have hurricanes or major outages because Florida's kind of it's uh, very spontaneous when you get hit with a storm. You never know when it's coming unless it's a hurricane that you can kind of plan for. But needless to say, it's, uh, you know, a great solution. And we have great uh, programs to help them take advantage of making it affordable for their budgets um, so they can have a better security for their families. So, yeah, go and check them out. AllAmericanSolar.com and also uh, Bangtail, the whiskey. Go check out Bangtail.com and you can check yep. that out. You were in a vet with John Daly, the golfer. And Oliver yeah. Anthony was playing. Yeah. Oh, Oliver and Jamie Johnson, man. It was, uh, 
Oh, Nash is, um, you know, uh, I've been friends with John the last few years and, uh, you know, I've, I've been an avid golfer, you know, again, coming from Florida, if you don't play golf, I kind of, <laughs> it's like, if you're not out there, uh, ripping lifts on the water and playing golf, like, what are you doing? Right. So he, uh, man, he, he's always been just kind of, is a great person, uh, and also has been a good mentor too. And what's been kind of cool is, uh, he has this, um, this foundation, uh, that's called Heart of a Lion. And it does a lot with our military. Um, it does a lot, you know, surrounding, you know, a lot of his, his belief systems, you know, for our country and communities. And it's really cool to, uh, just be there to support him with that. Oliver came through. Um, Jamie Johnson came through. Uh, we did, um, he had a whole thing set up with silent auctions. Um, and, and all the proceeds went, you know, to the foundation to support that cause, you know, with these vets and, and the other, uh, you know, groups that are a part of it. And it's just cool to see that, man, because he's, he's a very, like, you know, patriotic down home, you know, old, you know, Arkansas boy and, uh, you know, loves playing golf. And then they did the golf tournament and brought, you know, several companies out there to, you know, engage in that um, experience. And he's been doing it the last several years. So it's just cool to kind of watch it continue to grow and see where it's going to go in the years ahead. Yeah, it looked like a pretty sweet event uh, that you were yeah. hanging out at. Uh, your promotions <laughs> and marketing guy, Kevin Bing, is this your brother? No, that's, that's old Pops. That's, uh, yeah, yeah, that's my dad. Oh, that's your dad? Uh, okay, wow. Yeah. yeah, so he's like, uh, you know... He, he, well, I guess he would say he gets to somewhat live vicariously through <laughs> me in a sense. You know, he, uh, you know, he's getting, uh, closer to the retirement age now. And so he, you know, in his, in his spare time, he really takes it, you know, serious. And, and I'm very appreciative to have someone like him in my corner because he, um, you know, he used to be a DJ when he was in college, when he, uh, was in Purdue with, when he was with my mom back then. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, over the years, you know, they've always just been my biggest cheerleaders and, uh, it's just cool. Like whenever I put a new song out or whenever I'm, you know, promoting something online, you know, he'll hit up different groups, go on Facebook, social media. He runs my fan club page, helps me with that. Um, and tries to help, you know, maintain the, the streamline of like my bands in town. So I'm always keeping up to date when new shows and stuff are popping up for people to be able to, uh, attend. And so we're just kind of growing this thing. Like I said, we do everything grassroots. So, it's it's nice to have him there, and uh, he has the experience in the record industry because he used to work at CBS Records back in the day, and um, so before it became Sony Music, and so you know with all his experience, um, it's been you know a good soundboard if I have to ask questions, and he'll kind of guide me and be like, hey, do this, don't do that, uh, or you know consider this, and we just kind of lay it out and come up with a good strategy. Yeah, I was wondering, somebody's got to be helping you with all this because he's got Dirty Bird South Music, Bangtail Whiskey, All-American Solar, Brandon Bing Music, the Haas Music. He's got tons of social media. And, yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I run all the social media, but he does run the fan club. So, but it's, uh, but yeah, no, he does help a, a lot. Like, you know, when we get, you know, show inquiries and people are reaching out and uh, everything like that, it's, there's a lot, uh, it's a lot of moving parts. And to be able to do an effective show, and to properly, for you know, prepare these shows and make sure that we're doing everything we can. Um, we're working in all cylinders to give everybody the best experience. That's really my goal, you know. So, and that's where my focus is. Yeah, uh, it's it's crazy. Burned out at both ends. Just came out last month. We, we were talking about this before we came on the air. I mean, you were hitting it hard, Brandon. You got a bunch of stuff in the can. How long were you in Nashville? Do you, uh, how often do you go up there and record music? Um, so I, I moved up there five years ago. Um, oh, okay, that's downtown. right. Yeah, you're living there. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then, uh, basically like, you know, I, but I probably go in the studio. I'd say I probably go in the studio, mm, probably four to six weeks a year, like, you know, solid weeks, like where I'm recording for me. And, you know, that gives me, you know, I'm, I'm able to knock out in a two week stint. I, I should usually be able to knock out anywhere between, um, four to eight songs, you know? So it just really depends on how hard we want to go. But I, but I also, it makes my time a little bit more, you know, well spent because I spend a lot of time in writing rooms. I'm trying to really expand because I'm not just doing the artist thing. I'm also doing the writing thing. So I'm trying to, you know, build the right relationships with the publishing houses, get in the right writing rooms with the right writing circles, um, to get pitches with songs and, uh, trying to get other people to, you know, also throw songs my way that I might want to consider or hop in on a co-write. 
you know, I write, you know, for the most part, everything I have that's been out on my catalog has all been solo writes. So with this next chapter, I'm really trying to incorporate more of that community aspect of Music City in Nashville um, by, by bringing some other writers in. Um, not because I can't keep writing on my own, but I just think it's good to be able to have that support system and the different ideas. And it also stimulates new ideas that I might not have thought of myself. So, Yeah. Go and follow him. Tons of more stuff coming. BrandonBingMusic.com. His brand new single, To the Bone, comes out tomorrow. When we had you on last time, Party in the Pines was coming out. Are we getting yeah. stoked? College football is coming, Brandon. Come on. You already know. <laughs> <laughs> you already know. <laughs> yeah, I'm stoked about that. I mean, uh, next month is is going to be pretty much, you know, all the all the you know students are going to be getting back into full swing in college, you know, fall semester. And so, um, you know, I'm going to be working on that as well. I got some shows that we're putting together around some of these like events, trying to get into some of these uh, tailgates or frat and sorority parties to to do some college, you know, um, shows and stuff. Because I really want to spend the next, you know, over this next year and in the year after, I really want to develop a really strong core, um, you know, at these different universities so that I can just build a bigger, you know, uh, you know, fan base coming to these shows as we continue to scale them. So, with all the music I got in the till, that's why I'm really excited. You know, Burn Out of Both Ends is a good, you know, uh, platform as a foundation. To the Bone is going to be a good springboard, I think, to really show people what I got coming, um, really bring the energy, and it's a good transition going into right before school picks back up um, next month. And then after that, we're just going to all gas, no brakes, you know, till the wheels fall off. Yeah. You drive me crazy, tearing up my heart and soul. Piece by piece, you keep on breaking me to the bone. Tell us yeah. about the new song. Yeah, so basically it was just, um, I think that everybody has, has had that relationship um, that they can relate to. And I think that's the thing is, um, you know, with all these, with this song and every all the new records I have coming, I'm really taking a, a more intentional uh, direction on deeper cuts of things that I've layers of my life. Right. And I want to really connect with people on a, a really deep emotional level. That's really raw. And so this is, uh, this is exactly that it's, it's, um, you know, um, personifying like what that person was, you know, in your life through these different images of just really pushing you to your breaking point. And I think, you know, there's so many people that hold on to relationships <clears throat> try to fight in them and they're trying to just prove themselves and there comes a point i think where you realize hey you just really gotta just draw that line in the sand of like hey you know it's really over and everything that you're doing has been nothing but just been a uh a pain you know you've, you've caused more toxicity and you prevented so much growth you know for me doing what i wanted to do like I'm finally done and, and this is kind of like, a, you know, we're going to, we're going to separate once and for all, you know, and I'm kind of putting the nail in the coffin, so to speak. Yeah. And to the bone poster, this thing's badass. Where'd you find yeah. this? Who did this? Yeah. So, uh, my buddy, uh, Patrick over at Hope Tree Entertainment, um, he designed it. I gave him, you know, a lot of different, you know, uh, pieces of album art that kind of, I guess created the, the visualization of what I had in my head space for this, right? I, you know, there's a, there's a line in there, you know, chopping in my roots, you know, with an ax, like just kind of like the visualization of a tree just being like trying to ripping it out of the ground and thinking about like, you know, the skeleton is like, it's like the death of the relationship, right? It's like, this is like, there's nothing left but just the bones behind, right? And it's, uh, once, once, once the heartbeat and, and all the energy is gone, all you have is, is what was. And that's just the, the, you know, what's the left behind on that image. And then there's a hatchet. If you look like a machete, that's like right. If you look in the middle of the album art, you'll see it going into the core of the trunk of the tree. And it's like kind of being like entrenched into, um, the roots and everything. And, um, you know, I feel like, all the branches on the tree are kind of like extensions of like experiences and, and the people that might've been around, like what, what was impacted? Like, Hey, this relationship not only destroyed us, me, you, it destroyed everything that was a part of us in that process. So now we got to like, you know, uh, heal. And the only way to heal is to, is to leave uh, the remnants behind. 
to the bone. It comes out tomorrow. You're going to hear it here in about five seconds. Haas Nation, allamericansolar.com, brandonbingmusic.com, bingtail.com. He's everywhere, and he's going to keep he's, – he's growing every day. It's, it's insane <laughs> what this guy's doing, and you heard about him right here on the show. Brandon, thanks so much for coming back on, buddy. Hey, I appreciate you, Jeff. Thanks for having me, as always, and I hope you have a great day. It's Brandon Bing. It's to the bone. It's Kicks 96.5.